So, cassette tapes? Recording modern music on retro cassette tapes? Can we enhance our digital music with some analog mojo? Or is it all lo-fi rubbish? Let's find out. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at whether these retro cassette tapes can inject any analog warmth and silky top end into our modern digitally recorded music. As musicians, mix and mastering engineers and audiophiles, we're all looking for that extra sprinkle of magic in our music. We're all chasing the audio dragon. It's that pursuit that drives us. So then I got to thinking, can I use these retro cassette tapes and an old tape deck like this and build in some analog warmth back into my music? One of the benefits of using analog equipment is it can really add glue to a mix. So what we're going to do is use an original piece of music, we're going to bounce out the drums to the analog tape deck, and then we're going to bounce it back into the computer, and then we're going to compare and contrast and see which one sounds better. And to make sure we do this as fairly as possible, I've got two excellent quality new old stock cassette tapes and two high-end vintage cassette decks, both highly regarded in their day. So the first thing we need to do is find out which tape and tape deck give us the best overall sound, and that's what we'll compare against the original digital recording. And then finally, we'll bounce the entire digital recording out to the tape deck and compare that against the original digital recording and see how that fares. So let's dive in. So this Technics cassette deck is a much loved and well used item. It's seen a lot of abuse over the years. So what I'm gonna to need to do is use this rubbing alcohol on the pinch rollers and the cap stand and make sure all the heads are completely clean. There's a very high chance there'll be an accumulation of tape gunk in there and I really need to get that out to give it its best fighting chance. Okay guys, so what we've got here is we've got the Tascam Model 16, which is a fantastic digital recorder with a fully analog mixing desk built into it. So this is one of the very best multi-track recorders you can buy right now. Being fully analog recorded directly into digital, high resolution preamps, you've got a fantastic workstation, which is why it's front and center in my setup. So what I've done already is I've uploaded the channel jingle onto channels 11 and 12, because it's a stereo file. I've imported that directly into this, so it'll be playing from the Tascam Model 16. So today we're going to be sending the signal out to the tape decks and then back in through RCA into channels 13 and 14. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm sending the digital signal out and I'm bringing the analog signal back in into the analog mixer and then that's going to be recorded and that'll all be done in real time. So the first tape deck we're going to start with is the Yamaha KX580 Special Edition or KX580 SE. It's not a super high-end tape deck, it's not a Nakajimi Dragon or something like that that was heralded as one of the best tape decks in the world, but this Yamaha cassette deck certainly features somewhere in the upper end of the spectrum of high-quality cassette recorders. And then secondly, we're going to use this Technics RS-TR232 cassette deck. I would say that this is not going to be as high a quality as the Yamaha tape deck is, but I'm gonna give this a go anyway because I just wanna see if we can get something decent out of it and I'll go into the settings in a moment for both of them. But before that, let's look at the tape. So let's have a quick crash course in cassette tapes. There are a few different styles that we can use, a few different tape types. Uh, there's a type one called the normal position, and then there's these, which is a type two position, and these are normally chrome tapes. Now. To save you a lot of looking around and a lot of research, I can tell you that these TDK SA60s are one of the best quality Type 2 position tapes. So this is the tape I suspect is going to probably give us the best results. But just to guarantee that we do get the best, I've got a few other comparable tapes. So the TDK CD2 cassette tape is reputedly the same tape that's in the legendary SA60. But this apparently is more likely to be the beginnings or end of the trim of the tape, so less quality. So the premium stuff reputedly went into the SA60s and the 90s, with the 60s being a little bit better quality because it's shorter, so it can be slightly thicker. The 90s and the longer play cassette tapes are usually thinner and weaker and not as high quality, so that's why we've gone for the SA60. The CD2 is a more recent version of the SA60, although as I say, this may not be as good a quality just due to the fact that the tape inside it, although is made of the same quality tape, it may not give us the best results because this is almost like the off cut. That may not be the case, but we're going to find out. And then I've got a different style, an older style SA60 as well. 
So we're starting with what I think is the best cassette deck. So let's start with what I think will be the best cassette tape. So as you can see, there is a slight difference in the cassette style and cassette tape, just different eras, different prints. We'll find out if this is any good. Then I think we'll use the older TDK SA60 cassette and then we'll use the CDing 2 cassette and see if that can add anything or whether that is, as I suspect, not quite as good. But we'll find that out. I remember these so fondly. So let's go ahead and put the tape in the Yamaha KX580. The insides are immaculately clean. They were already fantastic as new. I keep on top of them, but I've given it another clean anyway. So the Yamaha has now been cleaned to be literally as good as new off the shelf. Now a really key thing when you're using a high quality cassette deck is to make sure that you've got the settings correct. So I'm going to use every available trick this Yamaha cassette deck has actually got to make sure the tape recording sounds as good as possible. That means I'm going to use the auto calibration so it actually detects the formula of tape that's in the cassette deck and I'm also going to make sure the record level's as high as possible without getting any distortion just to give us a fully, fully clean recording. Now one of the great features with the Yamaha tape deck is that it comes with Dolby B, C and the legendary S. And Dolby OBS gives a significant reduction in noise. The tape deck is armed, which means it's in record mode, but it's currently paused. So now we can set the signal level. We can see from the double D symbol that that is exactly where the peak level should be. But because this is tape and this is analog, I'm going to push the signal a little bit hotter. It's perfectly fine to do that. Basically, the higher the bias of the tape, the more it's going to be able to cope with that analog drive. So I'm going to turn the level up just slightly. Now we can see we've got a great strong signal. It's just clipping into plus two at the highest peaks. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's record the first test. Let's hit play, which begins the tape machine recording, and then begin the source. Okay guys, so here we are in the door. I've uploaded all the audio stems so we can actually see as well as hear what's going on. Just to quickly explain what we've got, just so it doesn't seem so daunting. Basically, we've got the full digital audio track on track one, so that's the original source. And as you can see, I've cut sections out of that, and then that means we can listen to tape one, tape two, and tape three, and then we're gonna go back to tape one, just because I think that one sounds best. So we're constantly going one, two, three, four, and effectively we're flitting between each individual source so we can compare them. But before we listen to the final mix, we're gonna find out if analog drums can bring some warmth to the overall sound. So what we've got here is the original guitar and bass track. The drums have been stripped out, and now the original drum source, which is the digital drums, are on track six. And again, I've cut out sections, and now the tapes follow sequentially below as well. So now we can go original, tape one, original, tape two, original, tape three, original, and then back to tape one. Similar story as above, so it's exactly the same setup, except the guitars have been stripped out of it. And what this allows us to do is hear exactly what the differences are between analog and digital drums. So now let's have a listen. So what I'm hearing on first impressions is that the SA60 tape, the new version, is adding a lot more depth and a lot more character to the drums. And to me it sounds so much more sweet and vintage. The digital drum stems do sound a lot more sterile. I've got to say that the calibration on the old SA60 tape might have been slightly out, the treble's way too high. So I think that's just an error in setup. But it's an interesting comparison nonetheless. So my first thoughts on the drums captured by the CD and 2 tape are that the overall sounds a little bit more muffled. I can see how it is very similar to the new SA60 tape, it's just not quite as high fidelity. Have another listen and see what you think.
So yeah, I found that really interesting that the drums were played on a digital roll and drum kit. They were captured digitally and then they were bounced out to analog tape, just a regular cassette tape, and then bounced back into the digital domain. And effectively what we've now got is a much nicer sounding drum kit. So let's go one step further with this and listen to the drums in isolation, comparing the digital drums to the analog drums recorded by the SA60 new tape. See if we can hear a difference. Now I'm listening to this through some high quality Biodynamic DT250 headphones and I can really tell the differences night and day. The analog tape sound sounds much more full, the snare has got much more weight and beef to it and that really is exactly how I want a drum kit to sound. The digital doesn't sound bad but it does as usual sound a little bit more sterile which is odd because that was the original source. What amazing results we can achieve with analog. Now finally let's listen to the complete mix which corresponds with these top stems. As you can see we're going to go digital, tape 1, digital, tape 2, digital, tape 3 and then we're going to go back finally to listen to tape 1 which is the new SA60. See if you can hear a difference. Now my final thoughts are that the TDK SA60 new tape sounds fantastic. I've got to say that the original mix does have some glue in there and it does hold up well against the analog version, but somehow the SA60 cassette tape version just really has some mojo, and that's the sort of thing I'm looking for, that extra bit of spice and pepper on top of the music. It really has added something of value to the sound, and I'm really impressed with that. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully you found this as interesting as I did. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to know that you're enjoying this just as much as I am. So until next time, keep on making music.